Welcome to Under the Fig Tree Podcast. In today's episode, hosts Rev. Micah Glenn and Rev. Dr. Ben Hout talk theology and life as they meditate under the fig tree. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Under the Fig Tree Podcast. I am your host, Rev. Micah Glenn, Director of Recruitment here at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Uh, we're not going to do that over. Uh, because I, I feel like usually I might have just a smidge more energy when I do it. Uh, but it's raining outside. It's and a I, terrible day outside. It, I'm just reflecting uh, the state of the world that we are currently locally situated in. Uh, but I am joined by my highly esteemed and highly regarded co-host, uh, Katie. <laughs> Kath- <laughs> Katie. Forget my name. Katie Gasser. No, so, it, you know, uh, it's you one of those. You want to switch it up every time. It, and like habits get formed. And every time I introduce you, I'm like on the verge of saying like Reverend Doctor. <laughs> That'd be fine. Uh, okay. Uh, and so. Cut that. Uh, Don't cut it. No, I can leave that in. Uh, so everybody <laughs> knows her true colors. No. Um, how are you? Well, I'm <laughs> great. Yeah. Uh, cold. It's cold here. It did start cool and cold, and then it started raining. That caught me off guard. Yeah. Uh, but it's St. Louis spring. Yeah. For reference for everyone, we had 80 degrees on Easter. Yeah. And it, now we don't. <laughs> Well, and even yesterday morning, it was like, I don't know, like 60, and then yeah. cooled off like by lunchtime. Uh, it just happens sometimes. Well, uh, today we have a guest, a deacon, a student, Abby Olaf. How are you? No. <laughs> no? Abby Olaf was last week. <laughs> Abby Reynolds. Reynolds. Hey. <laughs> that's why you thought, oh, that's why you thought. Her husband was going to be on because Noah and Abby Olaf are in like two weeks. Okay. Uh, now it makes sense. <laughs> you didn't just get your name wrong. This might be cut. We'll uh, see. But your first name is Abby. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's me. <laughs> One second, Dale, because I'm sure we can uh, fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try it both ways and then wh- whatever is anyway here we go uh well <laughs> today we are joined by a very special guest abby reynolds <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> we got it uh, how are you today <laughs> um doing okay hey. this weather is kind of you know getting me down but yeah it's all just, right can i just right. can i be can i be completely honest whether it stays in or it's out <laughs> I just got your last name wrong, but you share a first name. And it, the crazy thing is, is that, like, I don't know, like, because cause Dorothy, my wife, is a deaconess. She has deaconess students over mm-hmm. all the time. You've been at my house. I've seen yeah. you at my house. Uh, I just, I just, there's so many people. I don't always connect last names to, to people. Yeah. That's um, fair. Well, I'm, but, but if your husband's listening, he cares. So, uh, Abby Reynolds, your yeah. actual name. Uh, I am I'm okay to have a little egg on my face every once in a while. So, yeah, How are it's you? good content. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm good. How are you? Good. And uh, Abby, you are a second year. Yes. Deaconess yep. student. Oh, so, getting to uh, the point, at least class-wise, perhaps mm. almost finished. Yeah, almost. So I am taking an extra year to finish classes because I just had my baby son. Mm -hmm. And so I have three, three more classes after the semester. And then I'll do my internship the year after. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, that's a good excuse to (laughs) slow education down a little bit. (laughs) So are you currently taking courses or right now you're... Yeah, just one. Just one. Yeah, I'm in my spiritual care for women class. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's Dr. Bond and the three other ladies in my cohort. So I actually get to bring Ezra, my baby, with me, which is really nice. Sometimes we pass him around. Of course. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm taking that class, and then I'm still doing formation hour for the semester. Jessica in our office, I don't know if you've been around and she talks about it, but she has talked about Ezra and how, how she? much she loves that you bring him. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yep. And how old is he now? He's three and a half months. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're, I was, I was going to say it's a good age, but like, I don't know. As a, a father, they're all good ages. They all have their own <laughs> thing. But like, he's like, probably now, like, yeah, I got a little character, personality yeah. alive, yeah. moving around and 
yeah trying to get on the move but you got a little bit of time oh that for happens. sure uh, no he can like sit up with help and he'll be laying there and like straining his neck muscles like trying <laughs> to pull himself up so he wants to be moving yeah uh-huh. yeah that's good stuff i uh yeah i liked the baby stage especially early on yeah uh when they just at, at that moment where it's a lot of daddy baby time is nap time Mm -hmm. perfect for me (laughs) but no it's uh it's it's just different yeah Yeah. like i said every stage has its own own blessings the baby cuddles are the best so i like it (laughs) well i never paid attention to this but uh it wasn't until a good friend of ours who's now also a mother but when we had jonathan it was it strange who knows but she would always like sniff him yeah I've heard of this. And I would, like, it's like, what are you, what are you doing? She was like, it's a baby smell. Yeah. New baby uh, smell, like new car smell. I don't. So like babies, <laughs> they, they, there is a particular smell that babies have, mm-hmm. but I don't know if this is TMI, but if you're a listener, it's just educational. So like, but it does change. Like if a child is breastfed versus if they're like bottle fed That's and formula true. fed, yeah. it doesn't like take all the smell away. But, but Jonathan uh, was co- colicky. And Dorothy just couldn't keep up with him throwing up every single time she fed him. So mm-hmm. we had to begin supplementing him with the formula and then just fully moved him to formula. So, like, he didn't lose the baby smell. Yeah. Uh, but it was different. Well, it's a real thing. It's, like, like kind of this sweet just, like, little sniff his hair. Uh, Yeah, it smells so good. He doesn't smell like a newborn, though, anymore. It's kind of sad. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you're growing so fast. <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah. Next okay. time you, well, you're around a, a newborn baby, it's true. I will it is. smell them. Yeah. We have smell their head. Like three newborn babies at my church right now. Just walk up to the mom. Can I smell your baby? And the mom will be like, Yeah. Or <laughs> I'm or, probably not the first person that asks exactly. her. That's <laughs> the best part. <laughs> For sure. I mean, if you know, you know. So I, I doubt yeah. you'd be the first to ask. Okay. I was gonna say you could be really awkward and just do it. Just smell the baby without <laughs> asking. You're you're a pastor's wife, so yeah, I can do There's what I want. I'll place. let you guys know how that goes. Got it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, it's it, like again, I'm not being a woman, but like watching things with Dorothy, like when people would like awkwardly like do the thing, like try to touch her bump. Oh, like I was very yeah. protective over that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and just and then newborn baby, like somebody's holding them, and they're like curious, and like they like inch their like finger towards the baby's mouth it's like bro like what what's going on here (laughs) like let's let's even pretend that your hands are clean right it's still weird what are you doing (laughs) anybody try that yet with Uh, you know it's it's like the cheek squeeze for me they're like oh and they're like squish his cheeks i'm like no don't touch his cheeks yeah. <laughs> like, don't touch his face yeah, it's exactly it's yeah, like, people uh, they're, are sick they're, <laughs> exactly yeah. these kids are young and they don't yeah. have like full immune systems yet uh, uh yeah it's okay people are mostly pretty respectful about it now though yeah. it's nice yeah as a dad i also like really and i just never imagined myself doing this but i, I kissed my kids heads mm. a lot but it was my that's kids. cute you know what i mean my kids yeah you're not yeah. gonna do that to a stranger no, nah, I am not a very cuddly person, uh, except for with my three children. That's and cute. I'll be completely honest. Uh, I'm not even that cuddly with Dorothy. <laughs> She's a cuddler. <laughs> and so, like, I try, but, like, I get claustrophobic. Oh, uh, yeah. no. Claustrophobic. <laughs> I get trapped. I, yeah, I, I try. But with my kids, it's, it's a non-issue. So they're the three <laughs> okay. exceptions. Uh, well. Let's get into it. All right. Abby, you're a student. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and this is good. In past weeks, we've launched into conversations. We get back to this, but let's start this way this week. Uh, and if you don't mind sharing with us and our listeners uh, your story of what led to you choosing to become a, a deaconess student with the outlook of being a, a deaconess for a career. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a long story. Um, I felt like It was a lot of God, like, nudging me towards that for a long time. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I grew up in the church, and we (laughs) grew up in a very small Lutheran church. There were, like, around 50 people there per Sunday Mm -hmm. Um, in Owensboro, Kentucky. There's just not a lot of Lutherans in Kentucky, especially when you're, like, a smaller town. So we were kind of the church's kids, like me and my three siblings, Um, 
So, you know, when you're in something that's small, like you're involved in everything, like we would help with communion setup. We would take turns cleaning the church. All my siblings and I play piano. So we play piano for church. We'd sing for church. Like we're just doing everything for church all the time. Um, so we were just really involved, but I never thought that I would be a church worker. Um, that was not something I had on my radar, but I did want to do missions. So when I was like nine or 10, I was like, I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to move to India or Africa. I'm going to like adopt all these orphans. Like I had a whole plan. I was going to marry someone rich so I could adopt like 12 kids Mm -hmm. and then become a missionary family. It didn't work out. I married a Lutheran school teacher. (laughs) So rich in other ways. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I wanted to do that. Um, But then as I like moved into high school and started like really looking towards the future, um, I decided to go into pre-med for college. So I really loved science. Um, I just really love learning. I feel like I could be in any classroom and I like geek out. So I was like, this is great. I'll go to med school. I'll just be in school for years and (laughs) then I'll do like medical missions. (laughs) So I had this great plan. Um, I went to Concordia, Chicago, which I really go Cougars. love. Yes, go Cougars. Um, it was awesome. But I think I spent more of my time probably doing ministry work at Concordia. I was on like the spiritual life team throughout and doing music. I had a music minor. Um, then I really did doing like pre-med things. So I think like my real loves were showing like I was spending a lot of time doing these other things that I loved instead of the thing that I was like oh this is what I'm gonna do yay um so yeah I did my bio pre-med and then music minor and then my senior year yeah my senior year I decided not to go to medical school I had actually been part of an early admission program, so I actually had a seat at a medi- like an osteopathic medical school up in Pennsylvania. Um, I just had to keep my GPA at a certain point, and I would be in. And then I met Aaron, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to move to Pennsylvania and be in school for years because how is that going to affect us? And he right. was going to be a Lutheran band teacher and just all the things. So it was um, a weird process of turning away from that but I decided to um, not go to medical school and try nursing school so that was what I did next I did a graduate nursing program and I was just really unhappy in that program like Mm. it was 2020 and pandemics there's a lot going on and a lot of reasons to be Mm -hmm discontent with school online but um, yeah something about nursing and working in the hospital just it it did not feel right like I wanted to care for people but I felt like the way I was able to do that wasn't fitting like it was just it was not the right fit for me um so eventually started looking into other things like counseling um social work I mean I was I feel like I was just all over the place (laughs) like I was just trying to figure out what to do but a lot of prayer and somebody suggested that in St. Louis, you could do the deaconess program with um, social work at, I think it's SLU. Mm-hmm. So that's really what got me started looking at the deaconess program. And then um, Aaron, we were engaged at that point, got placed in St. Louis for his student teaching. So that was just like a huge open door. I felt like it was the right, I don't know, it was just like the right next step because I could have been placed anywhere like he could have gone anywhere as a student teacher but I got placed in one of the cities that has a deaconess program like a residential deaconess program so um, that was just really awesome I felt like that was the door opening for that opportunity Um, I (laughs) still I still took a long time to decide though (laughs) I don't think I actually submitted my application until like the end of January (laughs) and they're due the end of February (laughs) So yeah, you're still way ahead of. The oh last man, yep. it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I finally like did the application. Said you know if God wants me to go, I'll get in and it will work. And and I got in. And so, um, yeah, just it was a big switch. I had to really like switch my mindset from caring for people in the medical field to like 
caring for people in ministry because I hadn't wanted to do church work. Mm. I don't know why I had such like an aversion to like church work, but, um, yeah, as I thought more about it and prayed about it, like that became so much more sweet to me. Like the idea of being able to serve in the church. I was like, I love church. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always in church, you know, it's one of my favorite places. Like, why would I not serve here? So, um, yeah, so that's how I ended up deciding to go to the program, and um, it's been great. I love it. I love the program, and I love all the people here and all the professors, and just everything I'm learning has been so good. So, yeah. Nice. Um, I have a question forming in my mind, so I'm just going to talk <laughs> and hope it comes out. Because um, throughout your story, you – said that you loved church and you loved the idea of ministry, but you mm-hmm. were still so, maybe it's not a question, it's more of a comment. <laughs> but you were so still a little resistant to it. Do you know why? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I think, honestly, I have this uh, character flaw that everything has to be really hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, if something's too easy, I'll find a way to make it harder. <laughs> I that's like a challenge. A, it's a strength. I like a yeah. challenge. <laughs> Being only, I, as a person who only learns hard lessons, <laughs> it's not a weakness. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I think a big part of it was like that, that made too much, like that would have been too simple. Like I was like, no, I, I want to go to school and like study something hard, you know, like I want to do these hard pre-med classes and like really get into that and yeah I don't know I'm always like looking for that how do I make my life harder (laughs) um and I really did love being pre-med um like I really do love science and biology like God's creation is so amazing like it was amazing to me to get to learn so much more about that um so like that was a blessing for sure I learned so much um but yeah just kind of realizing like God was calling me to something different and ch- mm-hmm. church work is not easy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy, but um, I think just the idea I had of it in my mind, yeah. it would have like, it was too easy at the time, but you sure. Know, sure. now I see like the full scope of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, no, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to ask, do you think you'll try to figure out a way to merge your diaconal experience mm. and education with any of the medical or science stuff that you yeah, learned? I've thought about doing chaplaincy, like hospital chaplaincy. Nice. I think that would be really cool to be able to do some um, CPE and and work that way because I, like I do have some uh, experience just like working on the floor of a hospital and kind of like in that mindset. So I feel like I'd be able to work well with the nurses and things. Mm-hmm. Um so, and I just, it's really interesting to me. Somebody will like talk to me about their medical thing. And I'm like, oh, what, what medication do they have you on? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think that could be really cool. I'm not sure yeah. when or how that would happen, but yeah. Yeah. You had something. I did, but like it was the rare thing where you were kind of rifting. And I'm <laughs> almost upset with myself that I, I butted in. And now you forgot, didn't you? No, oh, I, okay. I have a, I have a See. line of questions in my mind because uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of crossovers. So I, I have a degree in chemistry from Concordia, yes. Chicago. Uh, yeah. The whole science thing that is one thing, but if we get there, we can get there. Um, <laughs> but first, I, w- I wanted to go back to Owensby. Owensby. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. Owensboro. Owensboro. <laughs> I don't know how I know that. But I do. I was so I was kind oh, of yeah. between the two with Owensville and Owensboro, Kentucky though. Yes. Small congregation. Yes. Either of your parents church workers? No. But no. Nope. Which is and so this is what I was into because for all of your not just because you're there, so you're like the youth of the congregation, but like you know playing piano and things like that mm-hmm. is is pretty cool. Um, that that you and your siblings, your where where do you fit in the four? Uh, I'm the second eldest. Okay. Yeah. All girls? Only um, girl? No. So my, I have an older sister. Okay. Two younger brothers. Wow. Yeah. That, I, so anyway. So I have, <laughs> ours is boy, girl, boy. And there's a part of me, uh, I, I wonder if my oldest was a girl. Mm-hmm. If my oldest would be able to help with the other two. 
but you never know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what God gave us. Uh, yeah, I, I was just curious about that just because, again, um, those congregational dynamics of, of being kids in the mm -hmm. in the parish, uh, it's not, uh, you know, we have 6,000-something congregations throughout the Synod, and they're not all big, mega churches. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are like congregations that you're growing up in. So for any listener who, who's growing up in a, a context like yours, what were some of the, the highs, I don't want to say lows, but mm. what was some of the reality of growing up in a congregation like that? And as you look, if you, if you can look back, uh, how did that involvement, you know, help get you to the moment, the moment of seeking mm -hmm. formation in, in, in a church work career? Yeah. Um, well, I'll start with the lows because I like to end on a high. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say being like some of the few youth was hard because you just don't have peers the yeah. same way, right? Mm -hmm. And then ours was the only LCMS church in town. Yep. Um, so I didn't have friends who were Lutheran. I also, I grew up homeschooled. So I had a ton of friends who were Christian. Like mm -hmm. we had a really big Christian homeschool group. It was really awesome. Um, all my friends were Christian, but mostly um, like Presbyterian, Baptist, like Reformed Baptist, Catholic. Um, so I didn't know anyone else really my age who was Lutheran. Um, and we were not part of like the Lutheran world. I don't know, like sure. the Lutheran bubble. Like that wasn't a thing yeah. for me, I guess. Um, yeah, so just not having, like, that commonality was kind of hard. Um, but on the other hand, being the church's kids was really sweet because it was like we had, like, 10 grandmas at church. Yep. And um, especially in, like, middle school, high school, they all got together and, like, raised a bunch of money because my brother and I went on a big choir trip and they had a spaghetti dinner for us and like raised money for us to go to this choir trip. I mean, just so sweet and like really generous and giving. Um, so that was really nice. Like just having that support, I think from them. And, um, I think it taught me too, like how to talk to people who are older than me and like in different life areas because most of the ladies I talked to were like in their 50s or older and I was sure. like mm -hmm. you know a teenager or something so like that was helpful actually because in life you're not surrounded by people your age like you're always relating to people in different ways so yeah. that was kind of cool um yeah and I think just having service to the church be like a normal part of life was I don't know. It makes, oops, keep hitting that. It makes service very uh, normal for mm. me. You know, it was just kind of natural. Like, yeah, we're going to be involved in church and we're going to like seek out that connection and, and try to feel out like where we can plug in and help. So like when I went to college, it was really natural to be like, yeah, I want to be part of the spiritual life team and I want to help and I want to like build that community because that was something I'd just done growing up I guess yeah yeah that makes sense uh, no it does I I more and more um so there are like some youth that come to like vocatio mm -hmm. and they come from churches with youth groups and things like that uh but there are others that come from congregations and they they don't they don't just get tied into the the bigger bubble just because of yeah. you know where you're situated so they don't go to the youth gathering or higher things or any of those mm -hmm. other conferences. And so, uh, you know, some of them would come to Boccaccio and this is like Boccaccio was, was kind of it for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that for them being able to see a part of the church at large yeah. uh, that you're just not aware of. And even, even here in St. Louis where, you know, there's, just over a hundred churches and a bunch of Lutheran schools. And it's like, you know, Lutheran land, you know, I grew up in North County here and you can, you, even then you can get, I don't want to say stuck, but you can get the, the your focus is in your bubble mm -hmm. and, and you, you, you know, growing up, I say this only to say, you know, when we were talking about church work, you were like, you don't want it to be easy. I, I don't, I'm sure for your pastor, if you were at, to ask him if yeah. ministry was easy, he'd be like, <laughs> Some days, yeah, some days, not so much, even for a congregation of 50. You know, when I was growing up, it, we had, like, 
probably a couple hundred kids from elementary mm. through high school and, and youth. Uh, what were we talking about? Sorry, I derailed myself, <laughs> stepping backwards. But just to talk about, again, what church work looks like, sorry. Yeah. And so my, my, the pastor I grew up th- here in St. Louis, he eventually became the chaplain here, but, but he, was, he was an older gentleman towards retirement age. And uh, we had a, a, a great DCE, but it, it wasn't that I was necessarily, and this is what I'm talking about, I, I never thought about it not being challenging. Mm. I just always struggled to see myself yeah. in a church work role. Yeah. Uh, but I was also gifted at math and science. Uh, and, you know, growing up, they say, lean into what you're gifted at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I pursued math and science. Uh, and okay. And just ministry. Yes. <laughs> I, I do re- in high school. My my co- my campus pastor at Lutheran North here, um, and I understand your husband works at Lutheran South. Yeah, this wow. is a, it, which is a great <laughs> Lutheran high school. <laughs> I'm glad I'm sitting yeah. in the middle here. No, no, it's fine. I don't. I'm not in high school anymore. I'm not over. I mean, I am over the rivalry, Freudian slip. Uh, but he was like really challenging. And I remember one day in high school thinking like I wanted to to maybe do the same thing. Um, I just think that's, again, all, just trying to relate to, like, your context of what you thought church work might be like. Because now here right. in St. Louis in the Deaconess program, mm-hmm. completely tied into the church work uh, universe, I'm sure now. You were talking about chaplaincy, but yeah. the opportunities and things like that are yeah. tremendous. And I, mm-hmm. I just, it's something I try to express to youth when I'm trying to encourage them to, to think about church work. Because there's nothing wrong with being the pastor of the congregation you grew up in, mm-hmm. Owensboro, Kentucky. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I almost said Owensby again. Uh, <laughs> or even in Chapel of Cross, where I grew up. But it, but if you grew up in Owensboro, like, that's not, it's not a limiting factor. Yeah, it's not, like, a reflection of all the congregations or what church work looks like everywhere, for sure. Like, it was very different there. And, um... Yeah, and also I should say, um, like, I didn't know what a deaconess was. I'd never heard of a deaconess until I went to Concordia. And Concordia, Chicago is one of the few places, uh, like the only place where you can get the deaconess certification with your bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And so actually throughout college, I think like 10 times, I don't know, so many people asked me if I was a deaconess student. (laughs) So everyone thought I was either like music education because I was always in music classes or if I was a deaconess because I was always at the chapel. (laughs) So it's like, no, I'm pre-med. What? what?" (laughs) Um, So I think if I had known about a deaconess and the opportunities in high school, I I mean, I probably would have done that then in Concordia, but like I had already kind of like seeing this other path for myself, I guess. Like right. it was like this other, yeah, other path that I was trying to follow. That's the tricky part of my mm-hmm. role. So if I, I mean, yeah. a young woman who's a high schooler and she says she wants to be a deaconess and she's asking about the seminary, mm-hmm. I'm always like, we would love to have you. But yeah. If, but if you know now, you, you can yeah. right. do your <laughs> undergraduate at Concord right. Chicago. And I'm not, not only because Dorothy is a, a graduate. <laughs> I mean, but like all of the programs – that we have are, are great, but yeah, Concordia yeah. Chicago's Deaconess program is, is excellent. Yeah. And so I'm always like, well, go get your bachelor's degree. If you want an MA in theology after, yeah, yeah yes. come and hang out with us for, for a couple of years. Either way, it's the same route. You just get to be a Deaconess sooner. Mm-hmm. And then you can get your MA and. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got you. Yeah, I'm yeah. tracking with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like backwards, but um, oh, I had a question. See, this is why I bring this thing to write things down. And, you don't write and it down. then I don't. Uh, and I, I try, I, this is, so here's here, sneak peek, BTS, everybody. I have been trying to intentionally leave breaks for you to ask your questions because I know you have them. And so, like, I'll rift I and let too, you, like, gain some steam. Mind. Well, then let's go back to the part where, uh, so you were talking about bouncing around and trying, like, maybe as a young adult, going down different pathways, mm-hmm. lifelong learner. I, again, all admirable uh, qualities because I, I consider myself the same. Even now, like uh, right now, my YouTube algorithm has a lot of astronomy in it. Ooh, nice. um, the universe is it's wild. Well, it's, well, it's remarkable. God, God's creation. So the degree in chemistry, people always ask, how does that merge with chemistry? 
I mean, how does it merge with theology? It's like, well, you know, we have this incredible world yeah. that we live in, um, chemistry different than biology, and different than astronomy and all those other things. But I always tell people, um, science helped me see mm. the, the truth that, regardless of how things look scientifically, there's no coincidence to mm -hmm. the universe even the places that are wild and crazy that don't have life, but in particular this one, and just the, the conditions that are required for it are, are just so not uh, probable mm. scientifically. Yeah. It's just more and more um, evidence, at least to me. Is that your experience pursuing science in higher education? Yeah. Um, I just think biology is, I don't know. It's so amazing. Like it's, it's just so cool. It's my husband hates science. That's amazing. <laughs> it's He's like, I, Dorothy's the same. I yeah. don't get it. It doesn't like matter to my life, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not applicable. And I'm like, your life would not be here without your cells. Let me tell you about them. <laughs> like, it's so cool. Um, but I just think it's like the design of it. Um, and it's from, you know, like things as big as astronomy, like all the way down to like cell bio. Just the design is so neat to see how God put that together in those specific ways. And it's just like, it's so beautiful. I don't know. Anatomy is my favorite. I just think it's, sure. it's amazing that our bodies even function. Like so many things have to happen every single second for us to be here. And so it's like life is a gift. I just love it. It's so cool. Did I give you time? <laughs> uh, I mean, I have other questions that I wrote down before, but they're not really, they wouldn't. We can. We can but, well, I did. Yeah. Okay. I remembered one comment, and I feel like I said this on another episode when you were talking about how you guys were the only um, kids in your church. Um, at my husband's first call, we kind of had a couple parents that were concerned about that. We didn't mm -hmm. have, we had a lot of kids, but they were all spread out in different ages, so not a lot of, like, peer groups mm -hmm. um some but not all and one of the parents was concerned you know well who you know is my daughter who goes to public school gonna have any christian mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. and paul actually pulled out the picture from his confirmation class and he said i'm not friends with any of these kids mm -hmm. but my pastor from that class i still talk to mm -hmm. wow yeah. so um did you have maybe that experience with a pastor or someone in your church that, mm -hmm. or just any, any time in your life, anyone, any faith leader that was really influential at all? Yeah. Um, my church, we actually had like several pastors. Um, I think uh, mostly like they just retired and then we'd mm -hmm. like get a new pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had two mentors who, um, it was my, my piano teacher, who was a really strong Christian, like awesome woman of faith. And then a, my best friend's mom, um, again, just like really strong faith. And both of them, I don't know, they were just like amazing at speaking into situations and, um, just kind of showing me like faithful living, um, serving where you're at like they they did different things um, my piano teacher played for her church um but then she led her piano studio but then she would just kind of like work in conversations about god like in between teaching and just you know cool things like that um my best friend's mom was like homeschooling and um you know leading that way so i feel like she was in like a totally different vocation but uh, she would call them like little nuggets we, we would like <laughs> start our day with a little devotion and she was like okay let's find like let's find the nugget in this scripture verse today <laughs> and so we would talk about like the little good thing that we were going to take away um so just kind of being thoughtful like in daily life when it came to faith um, yeah yeah I mean, yeah yeah i mean it's it's important to have people your age that you can relate to but Mm -hmm. um since we're in an aging congregation i don't yeah. think people should be afraid that their kids 
don't have any peers uh, it yeah. is important but yeah. to look up to people older than them i think it's also important so yeah absolutely yeah yeah i it's it's always one of these things where again um you know dynamics and culture shift you know when i was well, I, I say when i i don't abby you might be a little bit younger than me <laughs> katie you're younger than me but not infinitely younger you're, you're, I'm infinitely you're, younger. are you in your 30s is my question no yeah, yeah, yeah. so never mind <laughs> uh i'm okay guys i'm okay sure uh but there wasn't a lot of multi-generational things that happened in the congregation i grew up in mm. like it, 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 you just grew up in your kind of like programmatic tract and so like there was like the young kids ministry then there was like middle school mm -hmm. then there was high school uh and then no college ministry like everybody in the early 2000s when when you were born are you born before 2000 oh i'm a 90s kid there we go all right, all right. <laughs> at least a little yeah, bit yeah <laughs> no not the 2000s yeah, there we go. but the, but the whole point is is I think uh, as as things change, like places mm -hmm. like Owensboro, where <laughs> you have <laughs> uh, like a, a a generation for the youth to look up to, even if you have big groups, it's just it's just necessary. And I, I think it's yeah. just a gap uh, that happened for a generation or two that now we're mm -hmm. realizing that uh, maybe that shouldn't exist, mm -hmm. and it's actually beneficial not to not have any peers. Uh, but just having it for, for those of us, just have the example that look what happens even when you yeah. don't have peers mm -hmm. for, for your youth in your congregation and what can come out of it. Um, yep. Yeah. Well. I won't take us into a scientific conversation. <laughs> I, I kind of want to, but it's fine. Was, was Dr. <laughs> Molenkamp still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no. anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, and things are changed. Yeah, they, anyway, yeah. But I was going to, Dr. Molenkamp went to, well, she went to Lutheran Central, which became Lutheran North. But she's, mm. she's a legend. She's in, like, <laughs> their Hall of Honor. And she was a chemistry teacher at Concordia, Chicago when I was there. I'm just focusing on the fact that something that was Central is now North. And South. And, oh. But, wait. Uh, 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 that's a different conversation. <laughs> There used to be Lutheran Central. Okay. And then in oh, like the 60s uh, split. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. okay. But that's like a, it's a different conversation for a different time. I'll Google it. There you go. <laughs> um, well, then let's switch gears a little bit, Abby, uh, if you don't mind. And uh, yeah, if you don't mind telling us about life uh, as a deaconess student at Concordia Seminary, because a, a lot of times things happen different ways. Uh, um, a lot of our deaconess students that are residential are single mm -hmm. for now, maybe forever, who knows. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> but but you came to the seminary. Now it makes sense that your husband is placed doing mm -hmm. a student teaching and now a teacher at Lutheran South. Uh, but it's not often that we get a deaconess student whose husband isn't a pastor or yeah. <laughs> isn't a current mm -hmm. student, but that's, but that's you and your story. Yeah. So how's that been? Um, it's good. It is different. Like I'll say from the beginning, it was definitely like we felt unique because um, like in my class, there was two single girls and then um, like Jessica, you mentioned Jessica, mm -hmm. who is married and has kids, but like a little older, like in a different stage of life than mm -hmm. me and my husband who were like newly married when we got here <laughs> um so yeah that's that's definitely been different um we always laugh that I'm the seminarian and he's the Lutheran teacher because it's <laughs> usually the opposite way um that's okay he's just gonna start the seminary husband's association <laughs> yeah so dang. we got yeah. it we're Love fine it. um yeah I mean it's been interesting just like navigating that socially I guess but the great thing about seminary in this community is that there's so many kind and wonderful people here and everyone's so like welcoming and good at developing community that um, 
you know, we just kind of like found our people. <laughs> so yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Seminary Husband Association, yes. which doesn't exist. No. But maybe it should because I think uh, the incoming deaconess class. I think there's two women that are coming here whose husbands aren't. Yeah. Aren't going to be students or aren't already pastors. I love it. So That's maybe we should start that. We definitely should. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it remind me of your husband's name. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Um, what? Because I met you both. I want to say you were students when I met you. And I think it was an Oktoberfest of your first year. It was either oh, October. Yeah. Of, it was either Oktoberfest of your first year. Did, did you visit the Spring Fest before you became a student? Do you remember? No. I don't then it think was. So. It must have been. Because yeah. I just met. And I. Yeah. You know, I think you just. Director of recruitment joking around with them. That <laughs> yeah. Eventually, you know, you'll graduate and then he'll, you know, come to the seminary. <laughs> They're right. A student. Yep. <laughs> Eased off. But, you know, <laughs> now that, you know, you're getting there. Yeah. We'll. we'll We'll put Aaron back to the top of our list. And see I what mean, happens. well, we're here for another year, so hey. there's more time to, exactly. to you know talk mm-hmm. to him. Just got to put Jesse on the case, and yeah, yeah, he'll be applying by by October. I hope uh, Aaron's watching this. I hope. So. I want to know his reaction. I'll tell him, and I'll just watch, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> well, it's it's for me. Like it's one of those things where like uh, you got to throw it out there, but no yeah. pressure. And I appreciate yeah. uh, just just listening to where again, and I'm glad to hear. It's just a different dynamic, and mm-hmm. I hope there's never been any kind of negative attitude towards Aaron. That no, I don't. He's really serving don't the think church. So. I mean, that's like the reality of it. As we yeah. step back and again, yeah. just because he's a dude and serving the church doesn't mean he has to be a pastor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's why he says, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm doing what I'm called to do now. Like, yeah. if that changes, that changes. But like, he feels like he's where he's supposed to be. So, well. Yeah. <laughs> And even like, there's such a need for teachers in the church, and and we need guys and men uh, in schools as Mm -hmm. well. Again, women do a a wonderful job, but even the handful of men that are in any given school make such a Mm -hmm. incredible difference of the lives of the young men who are growing up Mm -hmm. uh, to have somebody to look up to as well. Uh, So for now, just to iron, teaching band, incredible at a Lutheran high school. And to call us when he's ready. Even at Lutheran South. (laughs) Even at Lutheran South. Uh, I would say go to North, but our music program is, I don't want to say better. But when I was there, uh, we got the only one in St. Louis in the the state band competition. All right. But that was, you know, almost 30 years ago. So who cares? Were you in band? Were you band Yeah, I played trumpet, yeah. That's what Aaron plays. We, it's the best. Look at we, this. we talked about yeah. this. Uh, I also played trumpet. Some mm-hmm. pe- sometimes wow. people ask me, do you still play? And I say, I try. Yeah. <laughs> so what I do two or three times a year, I get out my trumpet and I get out the hymnal and yes, yeah. I play yeah. until rubbish comes out of my lips. Which is I like five, I just don't have ten the, minutes ex- I know. Yeah. It's Not crazy. Yeah. No, my endurance right now is real bad. Yeah. And every once in a while, someone will be like, oh, like you play trumpet. Well, you play like Easter or something like that. I'm yeah. like, oh. Like, you've asked me in <laughs> March. Like, there's no yep. way I can get in shape to, because, like, yep. cause like, I'm going to practice, practice, practice. And then by the time Easter comes around, my, my lips will be mush yeah. and it'll be embarrassing. So, my dog. <laughs> I, I want to. I It's like one of those things where uh, my kids, even now, because they're starting to get into music, give me a hard time. They're like, well, your trumpet case is all dusty. <laughs> like, well, yep. Anyway, I, it would, and I, so I love the trumpet, uh, but I will say that. When I got to band, I tried to choose an instrument. Mm. And at first, I wanted to play the saxophone. And to be honest with you, I can't even really, I wasn't like a Kenny G fan or anything like that. It's just the saxophone is cool. That is cool. Uh, <laughs> and, but my brother was a trumpet player, and he had this raggedy old trumpet, and, and I'm the youngest of five. So that's what you get. I was destined. There you go. And like, <laughs> even. Like one of his spit valves broke off and he super glued it or like hot glued it closed. <laughs> and so to empty oh. that spit valve, I had like pull the whole valve out, <laughs> no. dump it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Oh, good Great. times. But I, but I became first trumpet eventually on nice. that raggedy old. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. life. My mom really wanted me to play trumpet. And so I played trumpet. Oh. <laughs> and it was fun. I, oh, trumpet's it was good. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's the most fun section 
in band. So mm. kids, if you're watching this and you want to have fun, play the trumpet. Yes. Well, not only that, like, uh, so at Westfield House, um, when I was there, a number of us played instruments and three of us played trumpet. Nice. And so instead of having three trumpet players, I picked up, uh, it was either a C horn or a euphonium. Nice. And so I just had to figure it out, figure out the amateur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. if you play a, a valved instrument, you can play the mm -hmm. other valved instruments. Yeah. Just the key change. Did you play an instrument? Cause you said you were in music yes, stuff. I play piano. Nice. Yeah. I play piano and sing. I've never mm -hmm. played a wind instrument. Until I met Aaron, I can play a scale on the trumpet. There Doesn't you go. sound great. That's, I can do it. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's where it starts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're we're the same. Like all of our kids have to play something. Mm -hmm. David and Talitha have started uh, taking piano lessons. Awesome. Johnny asked, oh, for goodness sakes, this kid. Uh, <laughs> so we started bringing up instruments to him, and he said, either the uh, accordion. <laughs> <laughs> or drums i was gonna say oh. drums yeah and i what told do you want to listen oh to drums not even not even it's not <laughs> even a question there's n like if he wants to learn how to play the accordion he's gonna have to do that later in life i'm not gonna support it call me a bad <laughs> father i don't want to listen to that at all i would take the back oh there's accordions the bottom of the barrel for me i don't enjoy that music is it better than the bagpipes? It is better. No, 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 or no. Worse no, than worse than the bagpipes. Worse I, I than would the take bagpipes. I would take bagpipes over an accordion Interesting. A any day of the week. Okay. Because then he could learn how to play Scotland the Brave, which is one of my favorite <laughs> tunes. Yeah. <laughs> and life would be it. He'd just have to play it morning and evening every day if that's what he chose. The seminary community would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, but, but I think, uh, well, I, I think we're going to try to get him into the saxophone. Nice. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, but uh, I think it'll be good for him. I know a good band teacher. There we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you been to that saxophone shop on, I think it's on Cherokee? Nope. There is a whole saxophone shop and museum oh. on Cherokee. So That's cool. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but <laughs> just Google it. You'll find it. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, if, oh. We've actually been talking quite a while. We have. Um, it, did, it hasn't <laughs> felt that way. Uh, <laughs> but I did want to ask this because it's not necessarily aligned with the, the science per se. Um, but think about your education, your interest in things like that. How, how do you, how does it, in your, it, from your experience and from your perspective, all these different interests that, that you've had and educational experiences and formation that you have, how do you see that playing a role in becoming a deaconess? I think in some ways, like my background in like even just doing science and music at Concordia and ministry, like I was just plugged into a lot of different groups of people. And I think doing that and then like experiencing nursing school and the hospital, like life, it really is like a whole life of working there is different than, I don't know, other places. Um, but I think it's helped me to like learn to relate to different people better mm -hmm. um, and to maybe like see things from other people's perspective, which in spiritual care can be really useful. Mm -hmm. um, just being able to like talk to somebody from a different background or who has a vastly different job than me, like being able to find ways to connect. Um, yeah, on like the people side of things, I actually find that that has been helpful. Um, I think like learning different things has helped me to stay very open-minded. Um, so like getting into systematics classes and when like the first <laughs> semester when they're like teaching us all the things we learned wrong and then here are the things that are actually true. <laughs> right. um, and, you know, it's like, okay, I can like go with the flow and like learn these things um I've just found that to be helpful um I hope that my like medical bio biology education will be also like practically useful at some point just mm -hmm. because you know spent a lot of money on that <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but um I think it all happens for a reason and like no matter what you learn you're not going to lose that like you always get something from it mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 
completely agree. And I, I think I've said this on the show before, but like a degree in chemistry when I was in Huntsville, Alabama, and, you know, a lot of science in the congregation, mm-hmm. including rocket scientists, being able to have a a conversation about the intersection between science and theology in a way yeah. that wasn't, uh, I don't want to say like rudimentary science that you like learn so that you can argue against science. Right. Uh, but speak about it scientifically Mm -hmm. uh really helped in that congregation and from day one gave me a lot of credit with congregational members sure that uh you you, trust comes in a lot of different ways Mm -hmm. so i think from in i wasn't like saying that question to lead into that but it's just one of those things where i always also encourage young people as they're thinking about ministry um pre-sem route is perfectly fine Mm pre-deaconess route perfectly fine um but but even now with the pre-sem programs you can Mm -hmm. you can you don't have to do a theology and language major yeah you can do it and again that's perfectly Mm -hmm. fine um but in a a changing world if you come to the seminary systems one they're going to tell the pre some guys the same thing they tell everybody <laughs> and then they're gonna reshape the way you think yeah. uh yeah. to say that yeah just just learn something different or, or do yeah. a different minor just for the sake of uh perspective i think is really good yeah perspective and just like learning and growing i think when you're learning it, it just changes you like it forms you it doesn't have to be theology like it's still formational and and like you said earlier, you should use gifts and interests that God's given you. So yeah. there's a reason for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and do what you love. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm good. Anything? I had all my questions answered. All right. <laughs> Abby, uh, if you don't mind, we will now uh, move into a segment called Right for the Pickin or Leave it on the Tree. Uh, where we just ask about a bunch of subjective items that, uh, well, I think about at random times as I'm going throughout the day. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, if you like it, uh, if you just simply say it's ripe for the picking, uh, but then also you feel free to speak into it if you want to and justify it. If it's seems controversial <laughs> and if you don't like it, leave it on the tree. And if you don't want to say anything about it, uh, Everybody will just have to accept your answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now, I find this one particularly controversial, and I've been asking everybody for a uh, first-time guest this in a, as a string. Maybe one day I'll stop. Um, <laughs> but right now, it helps me not have to think about so many different right for the pickings. Uh, and so, first off, right for the pick and leave it on the tree, pineapple on pizza. Oh, right for the picking. I uh, literally just ate that last night. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh. <laughs> That's the most uh, affirmative answer yeah. to that. It's so good. <laughs> okay. Look All at right. that. <laughs> Owensboro, Kentucky. You know. <laughs> All right. Small town USA. <laughs> I'm not even going to answer this one. Yeah, everybody, everybody knows how we feel about it. But uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. You just ate it last night. Yeah, which is wow. weird. I like don't eat it all the time i mean like it's not my only pizza choice that's good to know, you know <laughs> eat other kinds of pizza so so like just pineapple or pineapple with a lot of stuff like pineapple and um ham yeah, of course yeah. yeah like the classic yep. yeah it's mm-hmm. so good like sweet and salty mm. Mm. <laughs> there, well, I, so i agree with, <laughs> with sweet the and salty <laughs> trail mix it's a banging combo like i do understand that those two flavor profiles go together but like it's not just sweet and salty there's mm. dimensions to where the, where pineapple tastes a particular way tomatoes taste a particular it's just okay all right i'm past it it's fine it's all right it's all right you're you're a new mother and so you get the excuse sorry to yeah. offend it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no the last episode aaron was saying like spicy pepperoni with, with pineapple, pineapple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that sounds really really good that does sound good i, I don't uh, so i'll just i'll also I don't like, uh, you know, like people like mix fruit and meat. Yeah. I hate that too. Okay. It's just not my yeah. thing. And I like uh-huh. barbecue. I like sugar in my barbecue rub. So I like the sweet and salty combination, mm-hmm. but just fruit and meat. That no. whole category is, is leave it on the tree for me. <laughs> <All anyway. right. laughs> uh, okay. Right for the picking or leave it on the tree. String cheese. 
Uh, okay, we'll leave it on the tree because I'm actually dairy free. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. By choice but or by necessity? By necessity. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Ben too. Uh, yeah. A lot of, Dorothy's becoming lactose intolerant. Oh. Oh no. And she loves dairy. I I I, I make fun of her because she's my wife, but deep down I feel sorry for her. Yeah. That's I'll uh, text her some suggestions. There you go. Yeah. Right now, lactase is working really well okay, for good. her. So as long good. as she. Eats a lot of that. Yeah. My life is easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, st- string cheese is right for the picking for me. I, I, f- I no longer string it unless yeah. I'm in full mm-hmm. ADHD land and I've wandered into the kitchen and like I've chosen that subconsciously for a sensory <laughs> snack. Yeah. But I, I just eat it. But uh, yes. cheese is a nice, quick, calorific boost for your day. Yeah. yeah. It's ripe for the picking. I do like peeling it, but usually I just want to eat the cheese. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I get it. I, again, every once in a while, like it happens to be like a sensory thing, and I can't control myself. But sure. Still a little kid, to some respect. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't need to look. Right for the picking. Leave it on the tree. The Shrek series. Right for the picking. <laughs> All of them? Are there? Are there oh. only three? I think I so. don't even know. Really just the first one, though. Okay. Yeah. Like, really just the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right for the pick-in. And I loved the second one, too. I don't really remember the third one. But the second one was such a good sequel. I feel like sequels are never good. Oh, yeah. It was a good sequel. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. with, uh, like, Puss in Boots yeah, and Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, same thing for me. So the first two, the first is just classic. Mm-hmm. It, like, it, it's hard to beat. I love the Shrek series. The second one is, is a good sequel with Prince yep. Charming. The third one is the one with Rumpelstiltskin, uh, if you don't recall. Uh, See, and that's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't think I remember it. And I, don't, I, it, I don't remember the whole plot, but I know Rumpelstiltskin is the bad guy, yeah, it's, and it's just not. Mm. I'll have to watch as, it. No, it's not as great. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, they're good. I like Shrek. <laughs> Uh, right for the picking or leave it on the tree avocado toast i love avocado toast <laughs> <laughs> yes right for the okay picking. abby you can't like everything wait have I you, know. you, oh, you I okay string cheese you left string on the tree cheese, okay yeah. right, I'll, I'll give you a break yeah i'm just a positive person that's, fine. <laughs> I, I, you know that's all right do you like it uh okay i'm oh, going to leave wow. it on the tree i Avocados are okay, mm-hmm. uh, and I I used to like them more. But uh, the first time I got COVID, I lost my taste and smell, and it's come back. And I think, right, almost everything tastes the same, mm. but some things don't. And I am a big texture person, and if the, like for for. An avocado texture to be pleasing to me. The flavor of the thing has to be off the charts. And mm-hmm. avocado is just kind of mellow. That's fair. So yeah. I'm going to leave avocado toast mm-hmm. on, on the tree. It like, is a weird texture. It, it is. Yeah, because yeah, it's so fatty. But the guacamole, though, yeah. Love it. Yeah. That's fair. It's ripe, Pacific Inn. And then my favorite avocado toast right now is Caldi's. That's amazing avocado mm-hmm. toast. Explain it. Yeah. I'm uh, so good about it. So, well, it's toast. And it's avocado. But what and kind then, of toast is it like crunchy yeah, well, all the way? So like, like I a, have to like, get the gluten free kind. So, so yes. Yeah, do it's they like, have a good gluten free? Mm-hmm. Oh, they do. Okay. So it's like cardboard. We're, we're, it's we're delicious. There. And then they put feta cheese on it. Oh, okay. Now this is banging already. And yeah. then I usually get it with like scrambled eggs on top. Okay. I feel like they Add don't a have a. a more, so I, I feel like they microwave their eggs. So I don't eh. get things with eggs from there. Mm. And then they have Sorry, like. Sorry, <laughs> Well. But it's the sriracha that they put on there okay. that really does it. It's like a yeah. spicy sweet. It is really good. That so, sounds good. Yeah. I'll uh, go oh, get that. No, sriracha is sriracha. No, it is okay. special sriracha. It's not. I, I bet it's like the same <laughs> bottle of sriracha that everybody in the no, world has. No, definitely not. It's special. We'll, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do a taste test. Yeah. Uh, all right. I see. Like, But when I think about avocado toast, I'm just thinking like. Avocado I don't toast. want to be like a, basic avocado mm. toast but like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. like if you're gonna get special ingredients you can make a lot of things that are kind of mid better yeah 
like yeah. pineapple and pizza. <laughs> Mm. the spicy pepperoni yeah. see but that's not mid okay anyway <laughs> all right uh last one for me right for the picking or leave it on the tree careless whisper by george michael mm. very specific song that's very specific mm, i'm just gonna say leave it on the tree okay yeah is it's it hard. is it just like a music genre or just just not uh tuned it yeah, I don't, it's just like, it's just not doing anything for me. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's also fine. <laughs> Dale, you know Careless Whisper by George Michael. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, it, it's one of those things where it, it's either, it, 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 it's, it's like one of those songs that's been recycled, but it's like Careless Whisper. So I probably like know it. 80s or 90s or something. It. Like it's like the one that's yeah. the saxophone. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 oh do, 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 yeah okay okay yeah i do yeah, you know, know that you do know it yeah. everybody do. knows yeah. it they just don't know what it is yeah. the only yeah. reason i know who george michaels is is because of the office <gasps> george michael not yeah, michaels it's fine. yeah i was gonna let Andy you slide dresses up like him he does i think he dresses up as george michael fact check that i don't remember <laughs> he dresses up as someone it might be it might be i'm gonna like go watch the, the whole series the later now, seasons. Yeah. yeah yeah so office uh, office fan Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're back on. Even okay. In spite of the pineapple one pizza. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, then here's one. This is my last one. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. Right for the picking or leave it on the tree. Just pineapple. Oh. Just plain pineapple. Yeah, I like pineapple. Yeah. Okay. I'll pick it. <laughs> Pineapple's delicious. I'll eat it until like, I get like, you know, chemical burns in my mouth. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah, well... <laughs> There's ways to avoid it, but why? Yeah. I like it, but it really hurts my mouth, so I don't eat that much. Unless it's cooked, which is why I would eat it on a pizza. Yeah, I like just a fresh, freshly cut pineapple, the acidity. That's a lot. It, and yeah. it's not even the acidity. It's got, like, enzymes in it as mm. well. It is intense. And so, yeah. like... But it's tasty. Extremely. Yeah. I can have, like, a piece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one piece, and that's it. I uh, I like fruit smoothies, and so, like, a, a strawberry, uh, I was going to say banana, but I'm lying. I don't like banana in smoothies. Strawberry and pineapple smoothie. Mm, that sounds good. I put, like, a little lime in there, mm. and then I uh, put coconut water. Mm. Yum. Very tropical. <laughs> yep. Delicious. And uh, I try to do that instead of eating a lot of candy. <laughs> Sometimes I do both. That, yeah. Uh, Let's get a blender in our office because we already have candy. So I'm blended candy in the office? Well, no, 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 no. Blend. <laughs> okay. Yep. Smoothies. All in right. The hey, but you need a freezer. Anyway, you're, like, you're just getting way beyond yourself, Katie. I like the idea. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we just need a smoothie king closer to campus. That would yes. solve it. Or like a, yeah. like a, a, a boba tea or something like that that does There's that place up on Clayton that does smoothies. Caldi's does smoothies too. Yeah. Anyway, well, <laughs> Abby, it's been great to have you on. Before we go, if there was one piece of advice that you would give to anybody who's listening who might be thinking about a career in church work, uh, one piece of advice that you'd have for them, what would that be? Hmm. Um, I think, obviously, lots of prayer. <laughs> and I think just asking God to maybe reveal what your motivations are Mm. like why are you leaning towards what you're leaning because sometimes we don't even know exactly until later like why we were doing something um but yeah i think just like asking god for that wisdom and then to just show like if you have this motivation to go into church work to just like strengthen that yeah Yeah. i love that Mm. ask why you're doing what you're doing (laughs) yeah (laughs) something we don't ask too often it's great advice <laughs> well thank you once again yeah it's it's been great to have you on campus and like a yeah not that usually when you and the deaconesses or students are at my house i'm just there for a brief <laughs> moment and i don't like to interrupt but yeah it's always been uh, a joy to have you around the house as well uh yeah thank you for being a guest on the podcast uh and thank you for listening or, or watching on youtube weird uh and uh if you're listening and you're thinking to yourself and you 
been praying and asking yourself about, you know, what motivates you and what might be motivating you to be a church worker, uh, don't think too long. Fill out a request for information. You can find that at our on our website, csl.edu, under the admissions pages, or in a link in the description of the YouTube page. Uh, it's free to fill out. It's not obligatory, uh, but it'll help us find out who you are, where you are, and how to contact you. And we'll have a conversation with you and help you uh, discern your thoughts because we're a church. We're a body. We're not meant to do this Christian life, even discerning to be a church worker alone. Uh, and so make sure you fill out that request for information. If you know church work isn't for you, but you've always looked at somebody in the congregation and you thought to yourself, man, they'd be a good church worker, even as a youth, make sure you tell them because you could be that extra influential person in their life that encourages, that encourages them to take the next step. Uh, if you're in high school or you know a high schooler, uh, don't forget Vocatio High School is this June. Uh, registration is getting quite full. And so if it's something you're thinking about, Make sure you register and reserve your spot. Uh, and we'd love to, to meet you and see you here in June. And also, if you're listening and you haven't felt, filled out, I was gonna, if you haven't filled out a request for information, fill one out now because in the episode coming up, uh, Katie is planning a, a special under the fig tree and uh, filling out a request for information could lead to, could lead, uh, to you winning a prize. So out the RFI if for nothing else opportunity to win a prize from Katie Gaffler our recruitment coordinator uh, once again thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time under the fig tree take care